Um, Lydia graduated from Nascad University in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where she majored in jewelry and jewelry design and metal smithing. It's really particular. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Um, she was the winner of the 10th National Student Jewelry Competition at LA Pie Gallery in Ottawa. And she most recently received an Arts Nova Scotia Creation Grant and Presentation Grant, which funded her current work, The Gardens We Carry. With an emphasis on form and texture, Buxton, Buxton merges traditional goldsmithing techniques with alternative materials. Her work softly structure elements, embracing the subtle nuances of memory and experience. Recently re relocated from Halifax, she lives and makes in East Vancouver. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, textiles became a really interesting point, jumping point for me. Uh, it allowed me to incorporate color without focusing on jammy stones and uh, just faceted, really uh, <laughs> colorful, uh, flashy ways of, of making jewelry, which before now said I really didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. So the image on the left is a brooch, and the image on the right is a large area inside of one of those small pod objects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I explored lots of different materials. This is porcelain and linen. Um, yeah, often I gravitate towards color, and, and that's a jumping point for me. Variations arise from enameling uh, and all sorts of material exploration. The teapot on the left and the uh, pendant. Uh, <coughs> this is uh, the beginning of my exhibition, my final graduating exhibition. Um, the materials that I've used throughout the three semesters changed a lot. Um, I started to think about the process of of how those pods were initially made by, by the bee and, and what that kind of signified to me. Um, so the bee had collected these petals and created this pod, but they were actually buried underground and they were only discovered a few a few years before I started this project. So it was fairly recent discovery. It was something that we've walked over for centuries and not really known about. It. So I started to think about that as I began to incorporate ideas into an exhibition. Um, I ended up finding and collecting many, many doilies, uh, both handmade and uh, crocheted and also machine made. Uh, and so over a few months I started slip casting them, dipping them in slip and creating these forms. Um, this poem kind of spoke, spoke to me a little bit about what I was starting to create. This is a poem by Antonio Mikado. Uh, I goes, last night I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous air, but I had a beehive here in my heart, and the golden bees were making white comb and sweet honey for my old failures. So often, I don't know, it's in the making, it's in the failures that you find the silvers. The unexpected becomes real. So I made these pieces, and they covered the floor of the exhibition. So those people viewed the work on the plants. Um, they also were crunching over these hours of handmade and machine made pieces. And so there's a bit of a juxtaposition of the precious and and made um, anyway, kind of yeah, I wanted people to also experience sort of some of the visual and tactility of that.
and the memory escapes that kind of are shifting, but still there. So I did a bit of writing. And uh, I had this idea that I would start with a, a memory escape and write about it, and then that would inspire a new piece. Um, but that was actually really difficult. <laughs> so uh, I did it for one piece, and, and uh, it, it really got stuck. So I just continued to move forward. And, uh, I think that's, I don't know, I feel like that's the best way. You never know what's going to come if you just push forward. But, so this was a peony, um, a piece I had written about my mom. Uh, as a kid, I was in gardens a lot. Um, my grandparents lived down the street. And my aunt and uncle, I mean, both were from European background and Germany, and they did have a lot of hand skills handed down, and a lot of it had to do with gardening. So we were often in the gardens down the street. And um, it's odd, but I started to like associate certain flowers and fragrances and plants with certain family members. So my mom I really strongly associated with uh, peony, and so I kind of used that as a starting point. And um, yeah, uh, just kind of taking general shapes and silhouettes, but I found that it was just stuck. So I, I put this piece aside, and it eventually just needed to stand on its own. So anyway, I'm just going to take you through a series of photographs that kind of document how I work and how that unexpected is explored for me. There's often a lot of chaos. <laughs> Um, but I try to reorganize it and uh, put away elements if there's too many happening. Um, then that's this collection, and just a lot of pearls. And initially it was just the texture and form that I was drawn to, but as I kind of began to develop ideas, um, the pearls sort of became signifiers for memory and, and how they were seeds from memory. So, well, that's kind of how I view a lot of pieces. So, the moments of time. And jewelry for me is a lot about, I mean, it's connections, connections visually and to <coughs> But uh, it's also like connecting odd elements that, especially in contemporary jewelry, maybe didn't belong together or you wouldn't suppose would belong together. <coughs> weren't directly uh, one after another, but I think these, these images are pieces that I've taken from me, definitely the environments I'm in uh, influence the, the pieces that I'm in from the colors and movements that happen. And I think we can see these movements each other. Uh, this is my husband Luke, and he got roped into a photographic uh, exploration of contemporary jewelry and he often takes me out on and so I think we share with each other and try to share with our our close friends sort of things that are in our lives and these are two really important things that both inside and outside of my studio I'm always collecting so yeah. continue to uh, inform 
my experience in the studio. Thank you.